Welcome everybody, firstly to Highlands Gallery. Um, good morning from Highlands Gallery here in Drogheda. And I know that we have people from all over the country uh, at this morning's talk. Um, this morning's talk is from a series that we've developed called Collection Thoughts, Collection Talks, um, that we're running weekly, uh, every, more, every Thursday morning at 11 o'clock. And we're looking at aspects of our collection here at the gallery. So from historic art to, to contemporary art, we have artists in their studios. We had an artist in her studio last week in Inchon County Kerry. Um, and next Thursday, uh, we actually have a, a three-way talk with an artist in Dublin, another artist in London, another artist in New York, who are talking about their contemporary art practice. And this morning, we're looking at an older piece of work, or in actual fact, an, an artist in particular uh, called Father Jack Hanlon. Many of you who are familiar with the gallery and the collection, um, I know it's a, a very popular work uh, with many people. Uh, the work is called The Golden Cage. But um, I have to say this work and this artist has been, I suppose, a particular focus for, um, for Seamus Ran, who is my dad, in case anybody doesn't know, but, um, and for particular reasons. So it's a really interesting way in terms of looking at a collection and finding a personal link with an artist. So um, Seamus in his uh, retirement uh, has taken up, uh, I suppose, a, a fantastic opportunity with the Hunt Museum in Limerick with their docent programme and through that has uh, researched and delivered numbers of lectures including this lecture I have to say so we're delighted to welcome him here this morning um, and I'm going to hand over to him in this moment. Uh, good morning good morning Zoomers and thank you for zooming in. I knew Jack Hanlon but of course when I knew him it wasn't as Jack Hanlon I knew him but as Father Hanlon one of two curates then serving here at St. Patrick's Church in Wicklow Town, where I spent my schoolboy years. While I cannot recall any, han any homily that Father Hanlon ever gave, I do, however, remember him as a quiet, gentle, soft-spoken man. And I have a schoolboy memory of him because he would, from time to time, spend a, sport a rather vivid yellow scarf, in wintertime, choked neatly and tidily under his black overcoat, other times, casually, over the shoulder, around the neck, in the style and manner of, say, a Richard Branson or perhaps a Lord Henry Mon Charles. It was, of course, in marked contrast to his black clerical suit and white Roman collar. And if it happened to be a sunny day and he was out in his car, a little bit of the scarf might escape out the driver's window to flap merrily in the breeze. In 2012, the much-loved actor David Kelly died, best remembered perhaps for his roles as Ratter Tierney in James Plunkett's Stumford City, and as Grandpa Joe in, Charles, in Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. David Kelly was, in real life, a very stylish and dapper dresser. Around about the time he died, I saw an article on him which told how he would, from time to time, don a distinctive yellow waistcoat to, as it were, compensate for the lack of sunshine in this part of the world. On reading the piece, I instantly thought of Father Hanlon and what was, obviously, his conduit to the sun all those years ago. John Thomas Hanlon was born on the 6th of January, 6th of May, sorry, 1913, the first of three sons of Kathleen and James Hanlon of Temple Oak, County Dublin. Though baptised John, he was known as Jack. He attended the Sacred Heart Convent in Leeson Street and later Belvedere College. In 1932, on completing his secondary education there, he entered Holy Cross College, Dublin, to commence his studies for the priesthood. On the 18th of June, 1939, Jack Hanlon was ordained a priest for the Dublin Diocese at St. Patrick's College, Maynooth, by Dr. Wall, the Auxiliary Archbishop of Dublin. Some two years later, Father Hanlon was appointed chaplain to Arbor Hill Prison, and subsequently served as a curate in the following parishes of the Dublin Archdiocese. Corpus Christi, which is in Drumcondra in Dublin, Donard and Delgany, both in County Wicklow, and also at St. Patrick's in Wicklow Town. After that, Churchtown in Dublin. The financial circumstances of the Hanlons was comfortable. James Hanlon was the proprietor of a butchering business. Both parents had developed taste and their home was filled with fine furniture. Jack inherited from his mother a love of flowers, and he was a keen gardener all his life. He also inherited from his parents a life, a long life love of beautiful objects. The three Hanlon brothers were attended Belvedere College. Art was not then taught at Belvedere, 
and Jack obtained his initial art training privately and later attended a studio run by a Miss Henrietta Healy in Moulter Street in Dublin. Studying for the priesthood and pursuing the study of painting at the same time was, to say the least, unusual. During his study years, Jack frequently traveled to the continent, spending holiday periods in the studios of several Parisian artists and even got advice from the famous Henri Matisse in 1934 when he was just 21. He exhibited at the Royal Hibernian Academy and did so for each of the following years to 1938. In 1939, the year in which he was ordained, Father Handlin was an exhibitor at the New York World Fair. In the volume, Theology and Modern Irish Art, the author, Gessa Thiessen, recounted that Jack Yates attended Church of Ireland services in Dublin, at his local church, St. Stephen's on Mount Street, and at St. Patrick's Cathedral. His faith was not a narrow denominational one, but rather open and non-judgmental, as were his views on other aspects of life. Yeats attended the first mass of his fellow painter and Roman Catholic priest, Jack Hannon. As the author concludes, this would have been a somewhat unusual ecumenical gesture at the time, an act of friendship and solidarity in recognition of Hanlon's vocation as both a painter and a priest. A two-year gap between his ordination in 1939 and his first clerical appointment provided Father Hanlon with an opportunity to avail of a scholarship to study painting in Paris. Father Hanlon painted religious subjects, landscapes, still life in oils and watercolor. His first one-man exhibition was at Victor Waddington Galleries in Dublin in 1941. In May of 1943, a number of artists, including Louis de Bocchi, Nora McGuinness, Mamie Jellett, Evie Hone, and Father Hanlon came together to form the Irish Exhibition of Living Art. And he remained a committee member and an annual exhibitor for the rest of his life. Among his many activities, he found time to be a committee member of the Irish Society of Design and Craftwork, the Council of the Friends of the National Collections of Ireland and the Dublin Diocese Commission for Sacred Art and Architecture. Father Hanlon won recognition in the form of many prizes and awards, including the third Hallmark International Art Award in 1955 with the work entitled Angels and Doves, the Douglas Hyde Gold Medal, and the Arts Council Prize in 1962 for a work entitled Shepel Chormach. It is now one of four works, all by Father Hanlon, forming part of the permanent collection at NUIG. Now, occasionally one sees in print that Father Hanlon was awarded a bronze medal in the arts section of the 1948 London Olympic Games. But it's not true. What happened was, he presented two works for the 1948 Olympic Games, one solely for exhibition and one for, for competition, but he received no award. The bronze medal that year, however, was an, awarded to another Irish artist, a lady, by, a lady from County Meath, Letitia Hamilton from Dunboyne. Now, Letitia Hamilton, by the way, uh, is represented in the Highlands by this work in oils entitled Under the Mayo Mountains. Now, Christmas cards was another interest for Father Hanlon. During the 1940s, he designed for Victor Waddington publications. And here are two cards, but from a later period. Both are from a private collection, and each bear the Christmas greetings from Father Hanlon's mother, Kathleen. Now, perhaps, is as good a time as any to meet the good lady herself, as painted by Jack in watercolours. In now, in 1957, Father Hanlon, having served in Wicklow Town for five years, was given a new curacy. Now, the Dublin Diocese is large. It includes all of Dublin City, together with the counties of Dublin and Wicklow. And where was Father Hanlon appointed? Well, he got the Church of the Holy Shepherd in Churchtown, about a 10-minute drive from his ham family home on Fortfield Road in Temple Oak. Very convenient, as it would have allowed him to be very near his widowed mother in her advancing years. 
It's reasonable to assume that Mrs. Hamlin enjoyed the proximity of Jack in her latter years. The Christmas cards which I've just showed you were signed Kathleen Hamlin and Jack. Following the death of Mrs. Hanlon on the 31st of January 1963, Lindsay Auctioneers prepared a 12-page catalogue of the contents of the family home. Among the items listed were four paintings by Father Hanlon. This one is in oils and it's entitled Flowers on the Balcony. Brian O'Connell, in his biography of the scholar, art dealer and collector, John Hunt, outlines how he and his wife Gertrude had been very closely involved with Monsignor Maloney in furnishing the Church of Our Lady of the Rosary. This is on the Ennis Road in Limerick and it was built in 1950. At Hunt's prompting, various artists from the living art movement in Ireland were invited to contribute to the decoration of the church, including Father Hanlon. Father Hanlon's first contribution, first church commission was a work in oils entitled Madonna of the Sea. It was painted in 1953 for the Garrison Church at the Naval Base in Hall Bolin in County Cork. The painting is large. It's 13 feet by seven and a half. Speaking to the Naval Chaplain, Father Des Campion, he explained to me that it was difficult to photograph as it was suspended behind the high altar. Now this is it, taken at an angle from the side and behind the altar. So my thanks to Father Des for his help there. Now this image of Father Handel, complete with brush brush paints, accompanied an article by a Michael O'Reilly, which appeared in the Irish Independent on Friday, January the 3rd, 1964. The article had its origins in Ave Maria in Notre Dame, Indiana, on the 5th of February, 1960. It's an interesting article, as it gives a slight insight into Father Hanlon himself, his likes, dislikes, and attitude. He found most art critics never made any attempt to see what the artist was trying to do. He found Connemara and Donegal too sad and too desolate. On realism, he said, I like realism, but it must be interpreted reason, not a photo. He said the biggest moment of his life was his audience with Pope Pius XII. Aside from painting, Father Hanlon loved working in the garden. As he said himself, I like anything that brings colour. In 1960, he won the novice section of the landscape competition at the Horticultural Society's Spring Gardens Show. A major project on hand at the time of that interview was a portrait of Lieutenant Kevin Gleeson, the Irish Army officer who was killed in the Congo at the Niemba ambush. As they had never met, Father Hanlon had to work from photographs. The Irish Times of the 21st of May, 1964, carried a report on the unveiling ceremony. And with the report was this photograph. The accompanying caption reads, a portrait of the late Lieutenant Kevin Gleeson, who was killed in action in the Congo in November the 11th, 1960, was unveiled yesterday at Clancy Barracks by Colonel P.J. Halley, Officer Commanding Eastern Command. With him were from left, Lieutenant Colonel Craigie, Officer Commanding Clancy Barracks, the Reverend Jack Hanlon, CC, who painted the portrait, and Lieutenant Gleeson's daughter, Celine, and his widow, Miss, Mrs. Imelda Gleeson. For more than a quarter of a century, Father Hanlon painted prolifically and his, his paintings exhibited in many parts of Europe and America. This image is of the catalogue of his exhibition at Dawson Gallery in Dublin on the 9th to the 25th of September, 1965. A total of 31 images were there were exhibited 20 in oils and 11 watercolour. That same year, 1965, at the Irish Exhibition of Living Art, Father Hanlon showed four works, including this one entitled Fiery Leaves. Today it forms part of the permanent collection at the National Gallery of Ireland in Dublin. On the 2nd of January, 1967, Father Hanlon retired from his curacy at 
Churchtown. It is assumed on health reasons. And he moved to Sandy, to Sandy Cove Avenue East on Leary. He died on the 12th of August, 1968, at Jervis Street Hospital in Dublin. He was 55 years of age. Following Requiem Mass in the Pro Cathedral, presided over by Archbishop McQuaid, Father Hanlon was laid to rest alongside his parents in Temple Oak Cemetery. Now, details of Father Hanlon's will appeared in the Irish Times on Saturday, the 2nd of August, 1969, and in far greater detail than it would nowadays. Among the provisions, James White, the curator of the National Gallery of Ireland, was authorised to distribute Father Hanlon's paintings to a suggested list that he had, been, had prepared himself. In addition to his own works, Father Hanlon owned a large collection of paintings of both Irish and foreign painters, most of which were auctioned as per his will. Over the intervening years, Father Hanlon's works have, when they come to galleries and auctions, retain a steady, if not spectacular, interest from the public. Today, there are many locations throughout Ireland, and at least one in England, where the works of Father Hanlon can still be seen and enjoyed by the public. Here are just a few. 55, sketches are 55 sketchbooks are deposited in the National Gallery of Ireland. Broadly speaking, Parisian scenes may be placed in the 1940s, those depicting Spanish scenes in the 1950s, and the Italian scenes in the 1960s. This is Holy Cross Church Sea View on the Isle of Wight. It was built in 1957, where there was a set of stations of the cross. 14 oil on canvas, and they measured 13 inches by 18 inches, together with the scene from the resurrection. Each measures five feet by three and is suspended over the entrance door of the church on the inside. It is believed that this commission came to Father Hanlon in 1960 from the then parish priest, Father Daniel Cogan. Another church from the 1950s is this one. It's in County Donegal in the Diocese of Raffoe in the parish of Carrigart, where it is a chapel of ease in the village of Downings. As can be seen from the picture, the church is built into the hillside and it overlooks Sheephaven Bay. And beyond that is the Atlantic Ocean. Hence it's called Stella Maris. The present parish priest, Father Charles Byrne, told me recently that among the church, church's archives is a letter from the architect congratulating the then parish priest on having the courage to choose a 20th century artist, Father Hannon, for the Stations of the Cross. Now the National Self-Portrait Collection of Ireland was commenced in 1977 and is located at the University of Limerick. Today it has in excess of 400 works. This is Father Hannon, circa 1940, in watercolour. There are two other watercolours by Father Hanlon at the University of Limerick. One is a view of trees and buildings, 1946, with the University of Limerick art collection. And the other, untitled Virgin and Child, 1961, is part of the Watercolour Society's Ireland collection. This watercolour is entitled Canal, Bridge, Limerick, Lock and Irishtown circa 1950. It is one of six pieces by Father Hanlon, all now part of the permanent collection at the city, at Limerick City Gallery of Art in Perry Square. This is Ternure College, a secondary school for boys opened in 1860 by the Carmelite Order. Growing up nearby in Temple Oak, Father Hanlon in his youth would have known the college well, and later when it came to Churchtown as a curate, he would have regular contact with the Carmelite community there. In his will, Father Hanlon left a stained glass panel of the Annunciation by E.B. Hone to the Carmelite order to be installed in their chapel with the inscription, pray for Father Jack Hanlon, his parents and brothers, together with the sum of money to defray the cost of installation. Today, the, the college chapel in the College Chapel, among a number of stained glass windows, are these two. Both are by Evie Home. On the left is the Annunciation, 
and it is in memory of Father Hanlon, with the one on the right, Virgin and Child, invites prayers for members of the Hanlon family. And my thanks to Father Kenny, the Vice Prior, uh, Vice Prior at Turnio College, for his invitation to visit the, uh, the college and the chapel and to, phot to photograph these, win these windows. In 2013, time to coincide with Ireland's presidency of the European Union, a collaboration between three visual art institutions, IMA in Dublin, the Crawford in Cork, and the Mike William Gallery in Bambridge County Down. They created an exhibition entitled Analyzing Cubism. The exhibition looked at the works of a number of pioneering Irish artists who had traveled to France and further afield to study modern art in some of its forms. Among the artists chosen for the exhibition was Father Hanlon, and this is his exhibited image. It's titled Still Life on a Table, circa 1942. It sold in 2015 by Adams. It had a guide price of six to eight thousand euro, and it sold at eighteen thousand euro. Bruce Arnold, in his volume Irish Art: A Concise History, wrote. Father Hannan shows the influence of André Lot in his colour and composition. He is an excellent watercolourist, a good painter in oils, whose simple and domestic subjects show clearness and brilliance of colour, as well as strong composition. In an article on Father Hanlon in the Irish Art Review of 1998, John Coleman wrote, over the many years of his involvement in Irish art, Father Jack Hanlon regularly encountered his con contemporaries who shared his interest. But of those who knew him reveal that he was an intensely private man who exercised his priestly role, moved easily in social circles, but generally only expressed his innermost feelings through his paintings. With that in mind, here is a small selection of paintings by Father Hanlon. Cornfield, 1957, watercolour. It's now part of the state's collection of art as administered by the OPW. This colourful watercolour is entitled Post Office Balting Glass. It depicts Miss Cook who was then the postmistress in Balting Glass, complete with her potted plants, most likely geranium. It's dated 1946. Father Hannon was at that time a curate in the nearby village of Denard. This painting sold in 2005 by Adams for 3,355 euro. Conkers, oil and canvas, it was painted in 1959, and it depicts pupils at the De La Salle College in Churchtown, Dublin, sold by Adams in 2012 for 7,500 euro. Now, another island canvas is the French Market Women, 1957, 1967, sorry. In May 2015, it went on sale at Adams with a guide price of four to 6,000, and it sold at 8,400 euro. Now Wicklow Plough is the title of a design by Father Hannan for a Christmas card. It was part of a series of cards produced by the Cooler Press between 1925 and 1940. Now the Cooler Press was a publishing company run by Elizabeth and Lily Yates, sister of the artist Jack and the poet William Butler. It's the only non-religious Christmas card I have seen so far by Father Hannan, and it forms part of the Anne Russell collection at the National Gallery, in Dublin. Now, four works in oils. This is Farmyard. It sold in 2019 for 2,250. Sunday Lunch, sold in 2019 for 8,500. Now, Christ falls for the first time, and as you see in it, it is a contemporary setting, complete with a green bus and people indifferent to what's happening. 
Is the artist challenging us? Would we be similarly indifferent to the sufferings of Christ in similar circumstances? This painting sold in 2003 for 8,200. Okay. And this one here is Patchwork Quilt, and it sold in 2015 for 8,000 euro. Now, this is Bewley House. It's a beautiful period house, steeped in history, dating from about 1660. It's just two miles from Drada, and it is magnificently situated in County Loud Bank of the Boyne Estuary. It was the home of Miss Sidney Montgomery, later Mrs. Nesbitt Waddington. She was a lifelong friend of Jack Handel and who had been a fellow student with him at Miss Healy's studios in Molesworth Street in Dublin. Now, Beauty House in normal times is open to the public during summer months when conducted tours are given. Among the many paintings on display there is one by Jack Hanlon. So on your first visit, or perhaps your next visit to Beauty House, you might keep an eye out for it. The Golden Bird. In 1969, the year after Jack Hanlon died, this colourful work by him in oils was gifted to Drogheda by the Friends of the National Collections of Ireland and is now part of the permanent collection at the Highlands Gallery. Thank you. Now, a few thank yous for me. First of all, my thanks to Aoife and the team at the Highlands for the invitation to participate in these talks. A word of sincere thanks to Alison Lyons, recently retired board member of the Highlands Gallery for invaluable assistance when I was researching Father Hanlon. And my thanks to Stephen Hodgins of the Highlands Gallery for helping to put together my PowerPoint pictures. Eva, over to you. Thanks, Seamus. That's great. Thank you very much for that this morning. Um, and a, a fascinating tour through Jack Hanlon's life. Seamus, thanks once again. And just to say over and out.